fashion industry broadcast and Style Planet TV are proud to bring you their new Netflix original series, The Girl's Guides to the World of Designer Fashion. This new six-part series explores the seductive world of designer fashion. Series one, the history of lingerie. Series two, the legend of the designer bag. Series three, the mystery of the high heel. Series four, American fashion. Series five, Italian fashion, and series six, Paris fashion. In series three, we uncover the mystery of the high heel. Shoes are so much more than a mere fashion accessory. On the one hand, they are the most sensible elements of any wardrobe. They protect our naked feet from harsh environments and stony grounds. They stabilize our gait and protect our delicate ankles, knees and hips. But whilst they ground and support us, they also caress our feet, elevate our spirits and, at least in the case of high heels, they accentuate the butt, arch the back and turn us into feline goddesses of unlimited sexual power. No other fashion item has ever offered us so much. The transformation of the female body due to wearing high heels is a very simple thing. Once you put a high heel on, you project your entire body. The woman projects her entire body in the front. In order to correct that posture, she has to project that part, meaning the breast, more in the front, but also to correct the lower part, the ass is going to be on the back. So it basically reshapes a line and it creates these curves due to the gravity center changing. And that's as simple as that. In the beginning, there was Cinderella. More recently, there was Carrie Bradshaw. The stiletto gave a wicked nod to kink, and the Wizard of Oz gave us cinema's most famous goody two-shoes, aka the ruby slippers. Shoes that were actually based on a design by heel legend Salvatore Ferragamo. So why all the fuss about heels? Whenever we try on any kind of fashion item, there is some serious mood boosting going on. Branding expert Martin Lindstrom describes it as a feel-good provided by the neurotransmitter dopamine released by the body. The dopamine increases only until you swipe your credit card though. Then the high flat lines and the guilt starts to creep in. I spent $900. Except that is, when the item you're purchasing is a pair of shoes. Shoppers rationalize shoes as a practical buy, something they can wear multiple times a week. A shoe shopper can hold on to that pleasurable feeling for just a bit longer. But it's not just dopamine that makes us experience this sheer happiness. Shoes' mood-altering traits also come from another brain reaction. Buying new footwear stimulates an area of the brain's prefrontal cortex named the collecting spot. Shoes are a collector's item, whether women perceive them that way or not. When we think of the way they are stored on shoe trees and shelves, they seem to appeal like a hunter's trophy case, displayed proudly in our homes. As a result, collecting each type provides a mini adrenaline rush, similar to the satisfaction a stamp collector gets when he acquires a rare find. Heels carry historical significance as well, adding to their appeal. In previous centuries, only the wealthy wore high heels. Everyone else had practical footwear to do manual labor. Shoes were a measure of class, and we still have a bit of that mindset ingrained in our today's society. Like most animals, we are wired to associate height with power. High heels can literally raise our status because we are taller when we wear them. It's hard to do this backwards. You should try it in heels. Stilettos, on the other hand, take wearing heels to another level. When a woman wears stilettos, she assumes a primal mating pose, which experts call lordosis. Her butt lifts and her back arches, ready to attract the alpha mate. Our minds are structured in a way that may associate feet with sex. The area of the brain that communicates with the genitals is right next to the area that deals with the feet. These regions share neural crosstalk, which may be why shoes can be erotic. By definition, fetishism is not something that a majority of people have in common. 
Sigmund Freud is credited with being the first person to fully discuss and define the foot fetish. According to the University of Windsor journal, The Lance, Freud defined fetishism as the displacement of sexual desire onto inanimate objects or body parts, caused by the person's struggle with the confrontation of the castration complex. Freud also described the fetish as occurring through exposure over time to an object, while being sexually aroused. This form of conditioning is still theorized as the reason why people have foot fetishes. Favorite foot action? Okay, um, for a guy to kiss my feet. <laughs> awesome. And in fact, some of the most famous actors, artists, models, and other celebrities of all time seem to have a penchant for feet covered in heels. From Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, the German author of Faust, to pop artist Andy Warhol, who was a major practitioner of podophilia. And not to forget Quentin Tarantino, who featured luxuriating shots of nude female feet in a variety of his notable films, such as Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Inglorious Bastards, and Django Unchained. And who can forget Jules Winfield's famous foot massage scene in Pulp Fiction? Have you ever given a foot massage? <laughs> Don't be telling me about foot massages. I'm the foot fucking master. You giving a lot of them? Shit, yeah. Got my technique down and everything. I don't be tickling or nothing. Would you give a guy a foot massage? Fuck you. The design of shoes has varied enormously through time and culture, with appearance being closely linked to style and functionality. Most styles of shoes are designed for a specific purpose or activity and are dictated by current trends and styles. The evolution of the shoe industry has provided a wide range of shoe types for everyday wear, such as the ballerina, boot, espadrille, peak toe, and sneaker. But to know about different types of shoes, one needs to know about different types of heels. The so-called kitten heels, for instance, with a height of one and a half to two inches, represents the most common sandal. They give the glamour of high heels without adding the extra height. Pone heels, on the other hand, can have different heel heights and identify through rounded heels with a broader sole that gets narrower as they go down. Stacked heels create a perfect summer look and can be found in various shapes that are built from visible layers of leather or some other material. Women who love to dance will always adore the Cuban heel, a straight-sided low or medium heel with a curvature to its neck. The type of shoes that always celebrate a comeback in fashion are wedge heels. Wedges have a thicker heel and a narrower at the toes. The heel is not a single piece, but covers the front to the back of the sandal. Heels have always had a huge impact on a woman's body language and the way others perceive her, while giving a boost in confidence and height. And although in the very beginning, in the 10th century, men were the only ones allowed to be wearing heels, today, high fashion brands like Jimmy Choo, Manolo Blahnik, and Christian Louboutin represent the heroes of heels for women. Every season, they take our breath away by creating fabulous footwear with innovative designs, fabrics, and shapes, while sharing the passion for our so beloved heels. Give me the boots and no one gets hurt. Get me! Like